was as a player. To start things off, before Yao even joined the NBA, he played on the Shanghai Sharks. By his fifth season on the team, at 21 years old, Yao became the best player in the entire Chinese basketball league. He was averaging some crazy numbers, over 30 points and 20 rebounds a game, shooting a ridiculous 76% from the field, and led his team to a championship. Eventually, Yao would get drafted by the Houston Rockets in the 2002 NBA Draft. Although, it was unclear at the time if he was the consensus number one pick when it comes to talent, but every team in the league knew that Yao would provide so much more than that. They knew he had a massive following from the Chinese audience, so any team that got him would draw in a ton of more viewers and a ton of more money from the Chinese fans. That was the main attraction with Yao. Even if he became a bust, he was still a moneymaker. A lot of teams tried to trade for him on draft nights, but the Rockets didn't budge. Anyway, in Yao's rookie season, he got off to a slow start, but about two weeks into the season, he had his breakout game. In Los Angeles, of all places. Although Shaq was injured and not playing. In fact, before they even met each other, Shaq did not really like him that much. He didn't like how the media was anointing Yao as the next great center, even though he didn't do anything yet. In a TV interview, his remarks drew some controversy. <laughs> Wang Zhu, whatever your name is, you want some of Shaq food? Come get it. I'll be waiting for you. But none of this phased Yao. On November 17th, 2002, the Rockets faced the Lakers and Yao scored 20 points on 9 for 9 shooting. Shaq wasn't playing as I mentioned earlier, but it was the first instance where everybody started to think Yao could become the real deal. His combination of size and skill was something that the NBA has never seen before. Yao stood at 7'5", and historically, players who are that tall are pretty limited. They either have poor stamina, bad coordination, or are just really slow. But that wasn't the case with Yao. He was nimble, yet strong. Nobody could move him in the post because his legs were like tree trunks. It wasn't until two months later in January where Yao and Shaq would finally face each other. And with Shaq being healthy now, it was a much harder matchup for Yao. Shaq dominated him in the scoring department, but Yao registered 6 blocks, a lot of them on Shaq. And the Rockets won the game in overtime. Through the years, Shaq's relationship with Yao gradually improved, and by the end of his career, he had a tremendous amount of respect for him. Even saying that, if he didn't have those injuries, he could have been up there in the top 5 centers to ever play the game. That's pretty cool considering that Shaq barely ever compliments other big men who are younger than him. Yao finished his rookie season with averages of 13.5 points, 8 rebounds, and almost 2 blocks per game, shooting 50% from the field and 81% at the line, as he narrowly lost the Rookie of the Year to Amari Stoudemire. As Yao's career progressed, he continued to improve in all aspects of the game. Coming into the league, Yao was given the label of being soft, but he quickly changed everybody's perception. He started to be more physical down low when grabbing rebounds and going up for blocks. His post-up started to get sharper, crisper, with a stronger, more explosive finish. But more importantly, Yao had a very soft shooting touch. His elbow jumper was solid, and he was a great free throw shooter at 83% for his career. By his second year in the league, he was averaging nearly 18 points and 9 rebounds a game, improving his scoring efficiency as well. As for the Rockets as a team, they didn't find much success until they made a trade to acquire Tracy McGrady in the summer of 2004. This paired Yao with a top 3 wing player in the league, but as we all know, the era of T-Mac and Yao did not live up to expectations, mainly because of injuries. From 2005 to 2009, the Rockets won more than 50 games in 4 different seasons, but they never got out of the first round until 2009, and in that year, T-Mac and Yao were injured anyway. Individually, Yao had his best seasons during that time period. From 05 to 09, he averaged 21 points, almost 10 rebounds, and 2 blocks as the second option behind T-Mac. Well, I guess they were both first options, but T-Mac always had the higher usage. Honestly, it would have been better if the Rockets tried to run more of their offense through Yao instead. T-Mac was already declining by the time he got to Houston, and he got injured even more than Yao, so it was hard to integrate him back into the offense every time he came back. Yao was a more efficient scorer, and also anchored the Rockets' defense very well. During his healthy years, the Rockets were always in the top 6 for defensive efficiency. Unfortunately, those healthy years were few and far between. 
By his mid-twenties, Yao started to get a myriad of different foot injuries. With multiple sprained ankles, broken toes, broken bones, a hairline fracture on his left foot, yeah, it was a lot. For a guy as big as Yao, foot injuries are the worst because they usually keep coming back. At 7 foot 5, 300 pounds, the amount of stress that he put on his feet turned into a ton of problems. He even missed the entire 2009-10 season recovering from a stress fracture. And in reality, he never actually recovered from that. His last season would be 2010-11 where he played only 5 games and quietly retired at the age of 30. By the end of his career, he was 5-time All-NBA and an 8-time All-Star, although some of those All-Star selections were strictly from his sheer popularity, like in his final season where he played 5 games and still got voted in. So injuries aside, how good was Yao Ming actually? I honestly think he was one of the most complete centers the NBA has ever seen. He could shoot, he could pass, he was an elite post-up player and also shot above average from all areas of the floor. Well, he didn't take any threes, but if he played in today's game, he would definitely shoot them more. Yao was just so versatile, he never made any all-defense teams because the competition was tough, but he was still a great defender, always in the right place and knew how to use his big body to contest shots. Statistically, Yao doesn't look that impressive, but you gotta remember, he played with some very ball-dominant guards in his career and didn't have the chance to shoot like 20 shots a game. He would have easily averaged over 26-27 points per game if he could. Anyway, that's all folks. What are your thoughts on Yao? Would he be the best center in the league today? In a fantasy world where Yao stays healthy and never gets injured, I think he could have been a top 